This is the first in a series of videos about DevOps. And we will go back in time, back to the 20th century, because without understanding the suffering that we were experiencing at that time, it would be very hard to understand why and how we got where we are today. Enjoy going back in time for some 20, 30 or even more years. For us to understand what DevOps is, we need to understand also what is Agile. And we cannot understand Agile without going back in time before it was even born. Long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. I mean, 20 years ago, because really software industry exists for only a couple of decades, like 50 years, 60 years, something like this. Anyways, long time ago, 20 years ago, most of the companies were developing software based on the waterfall process or principles. And waterfall, besides being misunderstood and actually being very similar to Agile, which I'm going to explain later, but at least from the implementation perspective, waterfall was a copy of the manufacturing processes we have outside of the software industry. You know, factories producing cars or what's or not. And that made a lot of sense because if you just created a completely new industry, software industry, it is normal that something so new would take lessons learned from other industries. So some people said, uh, hey, why don't we organize our software development uh, around the same principles, around the same processes as manufacturing or production of physical something, components. But that was terribly wrong because software and manufacturing cannot be more dissimilar, cannot be more different. And here's why. When you have a factory that produces something and that production is expensive or relatively expensive, making mistakes is horrible. It can be disastrous for that company. So every company that is in production and manufacturing has strong incentives to spend as much time in the design phase and make sure that everything will work before somebody pushes the button and says, production of our new car starts now. Go, make some cars, do whatever you're doing because we validated it, we verified that everything is fine, and so on and so forth, there will be no mistakes. Now, to be honest, there are mistakes in any type of manufacturing, and it is impossible not to make mistakes. However, lowering the error rate in manufacturing is extremely important, and it should be done before the production starts. And here comes the problem. People in the early days of software thought that, this, that writing code and uh, delivering that code and doing whatever we're doing is that production phase, mostly production phase. There is a planning phase where we talk about how long will it take to do something, write some documents and so on and so forth. And then when we start writing code, that is equivalent to manufacturing production. But it is not. It's absolutely not. It cannot be further away from that. Because in software industry, production is free. Production is when we distribute our software and uh, give it away. Let users use it. To be honest, like 20 years ago, it was a bit more complicated than it is today because we had to ship uh, our software on CDs and USBs and disk drives and floppy disks. So yes, there was some cost in shipping something, in producing something. But today, that's almost completely free. We just upload our application to the web server and there you go, it's running. Our users can see it. And the process of manufacturing a new release is, is free because it's done by machines. It's fully automated. We have CI-CD tools, we have scripts, we have cron jobs. Uh, we have all sorts of means to tell machines, hey, deploy this thing when I'm finished writing code. Hey, upgrade this application and so on and so forth. In manufacturing, when we want to create and distribute hundreds or thousands or millions of physical items and give it into hands of the users, in our case, that is just 
uh, uploading a new version to the web server or uh, deploying it these days to Kubernetes or what's or not. So basically all our users get instant access to everything we produce and production is fully automated. And here comes the, the other side of that story. The design in manufacturing, you know, when you draw some plans and when you do some tests and whatever people do in manufacturing, that part is writing code, right? Sure, you might need to write some documents, some readmes or what's or not, but writing code is design. Production is compilation of that code and uh, distribution of that code. And that's the free part. That's something that comes at almost no cost. The design is what takes 99% of our time and design is writing code, writing tests, writing scripts, pushing them to Git, reviewing them and so on and so forth. So those two types of industries cannot be more different because in manufacturing we want to try to avoid mistakes and errors and potential problems that it might result in hundreds or thousands of or millions of components being faulty and uh, rejected and thrown to trash and what's or not. Imagine what would happen if you produce 10,000 cars that do not run, that cannot even start, right? That would be bad. In our case, in case of software industry, all our attention goes to the design phase and design is writing code. Production is compiling that code and packaging that code and deploying that code somewhere, which again, it's free. At the end, people, clever people, realized that waterfall does not work. It never did and it never will. Our industry is different from manufacturing industries. Waterfall failed miserably to accomplish the primary objectives it put in front of itself. It tried to create predictability and yet majority, vast majority of waterfall projects were delayed. It tried to reduce costs and yet majority of projects were over the budget or were overestimated because over time people learned that they should just say triple the amount of what they think it will take them to do something just to cover themselves. It tried to predict what users or end customers needed and it failed at that as well. Projects were taking months or even years from the idea until the end results were in the hands of our users. And it is normal that nobody can predict what somebody might need a year from now or two years from now. That is close to impossible when software is concerned. So waterfall projects took months or years to produce something. They were often over the budget and the end results were things that users might not want or need and with a significantly lower quality than what we hoped to have. Something had to change and something did change. We got agile somewhere around year 2000, 2001. Let's talk about what we got. Coming up next on DevOps Explained. Agile was born. Most companies are still not applying Agile principles. I'm not willing to change anything for real. What is happening on the right side? And something had to change. It is pointless to have something that is not running in production.